Hello and welcome to the third module of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, so, in the first two modules we have covered the prerequisites, uh, a brief summary of the prerequisites. Today we will start with understanding how rate constant changes with temperature and we will look at two, diff two uh, analysis done by two giants of physical chemistry. The first by Van Toff, uh, he is considered to be the father of physical chemistry. Uh, he started chemical kinetics, he started chemical thermodynamics, many other fields and he got the first ever Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1901. So, we will look at what he analyzed, how he thought of temperature dependence of rate constant and then we will look at what Arrhenius had to say on that. Arrhenius was another giant, he was the Nobel Prize winner in 1903 by the way. And uh, chemical kinetics is essentially attributed to Arrhenius. So, let us start. Uh, I will start by writing what is called the Arrhenius equation to get started and we will get into its more details. Uh, so, the very famous Arrhenius equation that you must have seen before looks like this sometimes people use Kb instead of R. Uh, here let me just define the constants. Uh, T is temperature, A is called pre-exponential factor for the lack of a better word. Uh, we chemists are not very creative. So, we just see it is before the exponents we call it pre-exponential factor. We have E A that is the very important term that is called activation energy and we will discuss this in some detail uh, and R is the gas constant that you are well familiar with. Okay, so, today we will look at the origins of this equation. So, let us start by reading excerpts from what Arrhenius wrote uh, in a very famous paper. A translation of the paper written by Arrhenius can be found in the link above. So, let me read on what Arrhenius is saying. Arrhenius notes that for most reactions that were observed in that time, each uh, increase in temperature by 1 Kelvin or 1 degree C changes the reaction rate by 10 to 15 percent, 1 Kelvin that is it. You go from 25 degree C to 26 degree C and uh, it has been noted that the reaction rate is changing by 10 percent. So, what he says is how do I understand this? what is going on on the atomic level or molecular level that can explain this. And that is what is the genius of Arrhenius. Uh, the first thing you notice, well one argument perhaps I can make is that at higher temperature the thermal speed increases, Boltzmann has told us as much. Uh, so, maybe I can say that with increasing temperature molecules are simply moving faster and therefore reacting faster. But Arrhenius uh, very beautifully argues against it. Arrhenius says uh, that cannot be true. He says that uh, it cannot be assumed that the increasing reaction velocity, reaction velocity by the way is the same as reaction rate. Uh, in 1800s it was simply called uh, reaction velocity. The increasing reaction velocity comes from increasing frequency of collisions of the reacting molecules. According to kinetic theory of gases which we will study in this course, the velocity of the gas molecules changes by only one sixth percent of its value. So, that cannot explain an increase of 10 percent. So, we have to do something else. So, Arrhenius points out we have to assume something different and he says and I let me read verbally here the translation. It must therefore be assumed to be consistent 
that the act other actual reading substance is not cane sugar, he was looking at the inversion of cane sugar a specific example. Since the amount of sugar does not change with temperature, but is another hypothetical substance which is regenerated from cane sugar as soon as it is removed through the inversion. This hypothetical substance which we call active cane sugar. This is the origin of transition state. This hypothetical substance, this active cane sugar uh, is what we understand as transition state. And remember in those times uh, there was no notion of a structure which we have not measured. And it was simply the genius of Arrhenius when he hypothesized that such a substance must exist otherwise how do I explain the chemical data? We have uh, taken so much data as a function of temperature and I cannot explain it any other way. And uh, however improbable it may seem, this is the only hypothesis that it fits. It was a very radical idea for the day and it, it is exactly right. And that is why Arrhenius is uh, given the credit for getting this Arrhenius equation right and the idea of activated state correct. Uh, I also want to show you an excerpt from the uh, work of Van Toff. Uh, this is slightly older than what Arrhenius had written, but I note uh, as I had noted before, Arrhenius equation was not written by Arrhenius uh, originally. It is a very uh, interesting trivia for you. Uh, Van Toff wrote that equation earlier. Uh, so this equation that you see here that is there in Van Toff's paper. This equation actually went off wrote in 1884 before Arrhenius wrote it. And uh, do not get me wrong, Arrhenius gave full credit for this to Wenthoff. And Wenthoff gave full credit to Arrhenius for identifying this reaction and connecting it to the idea of a, uh, an activated state. Okay? So, uh, this equation is the same as Arrhenius equation as you can quickly observe. Okay? Uh, so, let us look at the uh, what Wenthoff essentially argued, okay, what was the intuition of Arrhenius, how, uh, how Wenthoff was able to write this equation. Uh, so this uh, 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 analysis you can find in the Laidler's book section 2.9. Uh, I am writing the name of the section here as well which is called the influence of temperature and reaction rates. Uh, the reason is if you have a different edition than mine, mine is uh, edition 3 you can still find it in some other chapter number. Uh, chapter number will change but not the content. Okay, so let us look at what is uh, Wenzhoff's analysis. Uh, we will start uh, with a one equation that Wenzhoff had already derived. Uh, as I have noted Wenzhoff uh, is the father of physical chemistry. He just knew every single thing and he had derived several equations in chemical thermodynamics as well. Okay. So, uh, one particular equation that he had already derived was the following. Uh, in this course, we are not going to derive this equation. Uh, this we assume to be true for this course. Uh, here K equilibrium is the equilibrium rate constant and delta U naught is the change in internal energy. You do not need to get into to understand what is internal energy mean. It is some form of energy that is sufficient for the purposes of this module. So, let us uh, look at a specific example of a reaction and for simplicity, let us assume that the stoichiometry is all 1. The argument will not change 1 bit even if the stoichiometry is not 1. So, for this K equilibrium, how is K equilibrium defined? Uh, it is defined to be product of uh, product concentrations divided by product of 
reactant concentrations. Okay. Uh, we are also assuming here that this is elementary. If that is true, uh, what, what do we get? Uh, what kind of let us write a few more equations and let us try to use the Van't Hoff's equation to see where we go to and then you will realize the genius of Van't Hoff. We will consider this reaction and we will write the rate law. Uh, uh, we will write the forward rate. Forward rate is simply Kf into A into B and the backward rate is equal to KB into C into D. Uh, well, this equation is always true if it is elementary. Uh, well, this is also true at equilibrium then, but at equilibrium forward rate equal to backward rate. So, at equilibrium I get Kf A B equal to K B C D. Uh, you will see soon note a few uh, interesting relations. Uh, note that K equilibrium is C D over A B, but from the above equation this is equal to K F over K B. Okay. Uh, let us use the Van't Hoff's equation now. Okay. So, what we have got is K equilibrium is K f over K b. Well, ln of K equilibrium is then ln of K f minus ln of K b. Uh, Van't Hoff equation relates D of ln of K equilibrium over dt, uh, well this is then equal to d ln kf over dt minus d ln kb over dt and this is equal to delta u naught over rt square. Uh, good. At this point Van Tov basically looked at this equation and he said well, uh, this looks like too much of a coincidence to be true, always true. Uh, so, he said, uh, well, most likely this itself, this is a rate constant, remember, not thermal equilibrium. This it itself is equal to some energy over Rt square. And this itself is equal to some energy over Rt square uh, such that Ef minus E B is delta U naught. Okay, so, he just hypothesized it, he is not proving anything, uh, but this equation suggested that to him. Okay, so, he in general wrote D ln of any k over D temperature must equal some energy over R T square. So, this you can simplify and show k is equal to e to the power of minus epsilon over rt into some constant a, which is the Arrhenius equation. Okay, so, that is the argument Arrhenius had put forward. Note this is a completely mathematical argument and e is just some energy, he is not telling you what energy enters Arrhenius now. Arrhenius looks at this equation and I have already shown you the excerpt from Arrhenius. Arrhenius says, uh, well, what can be this E A, this energy that was there in Van't Hoff's equation? And he essentially argued that there is a hypothetical active state between reactant and product. Okay, so, he, he hypothesized 
that a transition state exists in between transition uh, reactant and product. And this E A must be the energy required to go from R to T S. So, what he is talking of although he did not drew this figure, but uh, what you have uh, famously seen is this kind of a uh, energy profile. Uh, and well what Arrhenius was pointing out although not in a diagrammatic way is that this is E A okay? and this is your transition state. And this we very well know to be true today. Uh, so, the question that we ask in this module in this course how do we calculate this rate constant k? How do we, uh, we have an Arrhenius equation, but we do not know how to calculate A for example. Uh, so, is there a way for us to calculate this quantities from an atomistic picture? At the end of the day, all we have is a dance of molecules happening. And this dance is governed by a certain laws of physics. We know the laws of physics. Can we use these laws of physics? to calculate this rate constant. So, that is going to be the focus of this course. So, in summary for this module, uh, we have looked at the analysis given by Venthoff, his uh, argument on how he got the rate constant to be something like A into E to the power of some energy over RT. And we also looked at how Arrhenius looked at that equation and presented a physical picture out of it. Specifically, he hypothesized the existence of transition state, which is critical in our understanding of rate loss. So, with that we end today. Thank you very much.